Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Polar Werebear deck as suggested by one of my supporters on Patreon, a 4-mana 4-5 legendary giant bear, and it has hexproof if it hasn't dealt any damage yet, and when it deals combo damage to a player, we get to create a food token, and we can pay blue mana and sacrifice a food token to draft a card from its spellbook, and when we do, add triple blue to our mana pool that we can only spend to cast the blue creature spells, so a very flavorful card in every sense of the word, and we can have a look at its spellbook, which is all sea creatures, so very thematic as well. But you'll notice the cards aren't particularly powerful. One common theme is that there's quite a few mutate creatures, and mutate can be quite synergistic with our commander, especially if it still has hexproof. That way we can pile a bunch of mutate creatures onto it and not risk losing it to opposing spot removal. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories here, starting out with our ramp cards, and at one mana we've got Lenor Elves, can also now play with Elvish Mystic, which wasn't available at the time of recording. At two mana we've got Explorer and Grow Spiral, to draw a card and put an additional land in play. Into the North, also quite thematic, can find one of our snow lands, including Faceless Haven, and all the snow-covered lands look quite nice next to our commander. We've got Wolf Hollow Haven, couple 2-mana ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, and Mindstone, and 3-mana Cultivate to find two lands, and Uru can also draw and put a land in play, can maybe be escaped later and Key to the Archive can also draft a card from its powerful spellbook, maybe get lucky and find a Time Warp, and then Nissa plays well with all the basic force in our deck, allowing us to ramp quite a bit. Then the next category are the Mutate creatures, at 2 mana there's Symbiote, doesn't have Mutate itself, but discounts or Mutate creatures, and then whenever we Mutate we get to loot. There's Sea Dasher Octopus, which lets us draw Recluse for Reach and plus 1 counters, Trumpeting Gnar can make 3-3 beast tokens whenever we mutate. Gem Razor can take out artifacts and enchantments. We've got the Great Horn for ramp. Parcel Beast can help us draw. We've got the Heron for flying and card draw. Shore Shark can bounce opposing creatures. Sterix can put a bunch of permanents in play. And the Demolisher can take out opposing non-creature permanents. Then the next category are the food producers, that way we can potentially use the last ability to add triple blue without needing to attack with our commander so we can keep hexproof. So at one mana there's a Gilded Goose, which also helps us ramp. Curious Pair can make a food token. It is a human, which is not very synergistic with Mutate, but still worth including, I think. Trail of Crumbs can also provide more card advantage. Golden Egg draws when it enters. Giant Opportunity can make multiple food tokens, Provisioner makes food with Landfall, and Feasting Troll King will make three food tokens when we cast it, can also be returned from our graveyard if we sacrifice enough food. Then the next category are bears, this was a special request from my Patreon supporter, that way we have some bears to keep our commander company. At two mana there's Ayula, which will potentially put two counters on a bear, or have one of our bears fight an opposing creature whenever another bear enters battlefield under our control, so plays nicely with our commander. We've got Wilson as one of the new Specialized cards. I know Specialized isn't a very popular mechanic right now, but it still fits our deck nicely as a 2-2 that can turn into a 5-5 with Reach and Trample, or potentially we can Specialize into the blue mode, which makes it a 3-3 that cannot be blocked. Trample a little bit excessive on a creature that's unblockable, but still nice to have. Then we've got the new Lucamina Moon Druid, which can be specialized into a bear if we get to green mode, making it a 4-4 Trampler, giving other creatures we control plus one plus one and trample, and then when it dies it transforms back into the Moon Druid, or we can potentially go for the Crocodile form as well to keep an opposing creature tapped down. Then there's a Gore Claw, discounting our expensive creatures, and then potentially giving our larger creatures plus one plus one and trample, which also plays well with our commander. And then a Spirit of the Elder Guard also plays well with all the snow lands in the deck, getting plus one plus zero oh for each snow permanent we control, and finding a snow land when it enters. And then the next category are big blue creatures, which we can potentially ramp into, thanks to our commander's last ability, adding triple blue, that we can only spend to cast blue creature spells, and those include Hullbreaker Horror to bounce stuff back, we've got Archipelagor, which also is Mutate, so could put it in the Mutate category, and keep a bunch of opposing creatures tapped down, 
We've got the Cyclone Summoner, that when we cast it from our hand, returns all permanents to their owner's hands except for giants, wizards, and lands. It's also very synergistic with our commander, which happens to be a giant. We've got a Nazahal to punish non-creature spells. Sky Turtle we can also channel to use it as early interaction. We've got Koma, Cosmo Serpent, very powerful curve topper. We've got the new Ancient Silver Dragon to potentially draw a ton of cards and Jingataxius will shrink the opponent's hand size down to zero while drawing seven cards every turn. Next up we've got the card draw category which of course overlaps with some of our other cards but we've got Glimpse the Cosmos which we can cast out of our graveyard if we control a giant which conveniently we have with our commander. We've got Oracle letting us play lands of the top and letting us play additional lands each turn. Elder Gergroth just a large creature that can provide card advantage or additional board presence. Got Immortal Sun to shut down all Planeswalkers as we only have Nissa in the deck and draw additional cards, give our cards a one mana discount and pump up our team. The Great Henge is also great in any creature heavy deck like this one. And Hydroid Crisis we could also fit into the big blue creature category as another nice curve topper that can refresh our hand and gain a bit of life in the process. And then the final category is Interaction, where we've got Wash Away to counter opposing commanders, we've got a Giant's Grasp, which we can enchant our commander with to steal an opposing permanent, and then as long as our commander stays in play, we will keep control of that permanent. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn, Temporal Sundering takes an extra turn and bounces an opposing creature back, but as a legendary sorcery can only be cast if we control a legendary creature, but thanks to Hexproof we can count on our commander being in play. We've got River's Rebuke as a one-sided bounce spell, and finally Kogla as a versatile creature that can fight when it enters and blow up artifacts or enchantments when it attacks. And then our mana base includes all our snow-covered lands to enable some cards like Spirit of the Elder Guard, Got Hall of the Storm Giants, also thematic and a nice mana sink. Got a few of the channel lands with Soaring City and Buseju. Castle Garenbrick can also come in handy when casting our expensive green spells. Got the Cabin, which can also make a food token. A Lair of the Hydra, another creature land. And then a whole bunch of blue green dual lands to help with mana fixing, alongside Faceless Haven as an extra creature land. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Liliana, untouched by death. So maybe a zombie deck. Our hand is missing some early ramp. And yeah, overall the curve's quite high, so I think we need to mulligan. This is better. Signet into Werebear on three. And then we even have a food enabler to maybe help out. Now we can even make a food token with Curious Pair. Opponent with a Metallic Mimic, naming Zombie, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, play Werebear. Can mutate onto it next turn. And maybe use its ability as well to help pay for it. So sure, we can try that. And then another mutate creature will do. Could attack, but I think I'd rather keep Hexproof for now and play a trail. And then hoping to find another mutate creature with a spellbook. Take three. Plenty of zombies here, pumped by the metallic mimic. But uh, let's start again by sacking our food token. Make triple blue. And we can also pay for trail. Find Hydroids and another mutate creature. And then we can mutate the gore. And we'll make a 7 7, I think, even though we lose the giant creature type. And we
we can keep white and adversary type down, I suppose. And yeah, we've got a few more mutate creatures lined up. There's Liliana. Gonna start plussing. Blood on the Snow would have been quite backbreaking as an answer to our commander despite Hexproof. Provisioner can provide some extra food tokens. So let's see, Provisioner. Play a land, make a food. And then use the food. Make triple blue, draft another card. And do I want to pay for trail? One, two, five. Yeah, sure. And might want to land now. Don't see any mutates. Affinity for tokens, I guess we can maybe enable with provisioner. Although probably not really. Let's go for the whale then. And then we can mutate the shark. Bunch of triggers. Can keep the non-mimic creatures tapped down while bouncing the mimic. Could potentially kill Liliana even though we lose hexproof. But then uh, yeah, we've got a lot of useful tools available. Can mutate a whole bunch more, draw more cards. Eventually bounce their board with rebuke, take over with crisis. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a black-white cleric's deck with the Skyclave Hierophant. Our hands a little bit awkward. I like the mutate creatures, but having these too expensive blue cards without any ramp is probably a mulligan. Alright, well, once again no ramp and a couple expensive ones in hand, but Trail of Crumbs sort of helps us ramp in combination with our commander. So we'll try it. And the Gold Steel Heart's a great draw. Could hang on to Fabled Passage potentially if we find an Oracle of Moldaya to shuffle the top of our deck with. Although a trail can sort of do the same. Opponent with an Archivist. Okay, glad we have a ramp artifact in this case instead of a into the north, which would otherwise draw the opponent a card. And now that we have Nissa, we want to prioritize playing our forests out. So yeah, hopefully our Werebear can hold off any early attacks. Even though I don't really want to block with it either, since then we would lose Hexproof. But most opponents haven't been doing that so far. So we can play Nissa, animate a land, play a Trail of Crumbs. Or we could keep our land on defense, but this seems okay. And then we can use a food token next turn to maybe ramp out one of our expensive cards, especially if Nissa's still around. Cleric class, so they do have some life gain synergy, clearly. And they're going after Nissa, so I guess we'll block. And lose Hexproof. Okay, get to untap. And let's see here. Activate Werebear. Make some blue. And we want to activate Trail of Crumbs. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, should be fine. 
and uh, we can find an island, I guess. And mutate seems good. Okay, can untap one more forest if we'd like. And then let's do some math. So that's currently 4 plus 4 is 8, 9, 10. So I can play a Mind Stone first if I'd like. And then could have maybe considered attacking first as well. Jingitaxius versus Ancient Silver Dragon. They're both pretty decent. Let's go with Jingitaxius, the more expensive of the two. And stay back. Draw seven. And discard to hand size. Hall can go. And maybe an extra land. Probably don't need harbor actually. And uh, signets. Okay, let's hope there's no mass sweeper. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Opponent's gonna have to discard their hand. Next turn we can take an extra turn with Time Warp, plus maybe even play our dragon alongside it to draw every card in our deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Omnath, a Locus of the Royal, so an elemental ramp deck. We'll keep this. Elves is probably not gonna survive for long but can give us a small mana boost. So next turn we could Mind Stone and Explore. Okay. And Uro for more ramp. So we just want to get our werebear down and then uh, maybe mutate a parcel beast, although Gergroth is tempting too. Put it with an evolution for extra counters from Omnath, if that makes sense. So yeah, I mean, Gergroth might be the play here and then we can attack for one. They may not yet be prepared to deal with Gergroth, just an Omnath. And Elves down. Has served us well. Sure Shark could bounce Omnath, but we can start by attacking and drawing with Gergroth. Troll King's not bad either. Could also play our commander and then mutate the Sure Shark next turn onto it, which I don't hate. Could take a bit of a gamble with Golden Egg, hope we draw land, still play our commander. And if we don't, we can still play Uro. That seems reasonable. Right, Oracle instead. So, no bear, but can develop our mana. And the Great Horn, another Mutate card we can maybe combine with the Shore Shark. Alright, it's gonna be a Rada. Can also play lands of the top. Alright, so still no lands is starting to become a bit of a problem. We could attack with Gargroth if they double block, we can flash in Shore Shark. And um, afterwards, maybe play Oracle. Alright, Bosager is good, can also blow up the evolution, but probably need it as a land. Opponent does go for the double block. So I'm guessing we want to bounce Omnath and kill Rada. Okay, play a land and pass, unless we want to mutate Parcel Beast, but I doubt it. Okay, 
there's Omnath again. With the fetch land. But yeah, we have more mutate creatures to go with the shark and bounce Omnath once again. So the early Gargroth putting in some great work. So let's see here. Five, six, seven mana. Okay, maybe start by playing Oracle, see what's on top. Land is great. Another land is even better. And then how about we mutate the Great Horn? We get to ramp and bounce Omnath, and your opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand's got no ramp, no green mana, so easy mulligan. Okay, still no green mana, but uh, yeah, we'll probably find one soon, and then Cultivate can find a second. Facing Chulain, so a Bant creature flicker deck. Cold Steel can name green, so that will solve our problems. And then, let's see here, can uh, Mind Stone into Cultivate, grab two forests, opponent ramping with Rejuvenator, and we can play our commander and Mutate Parcel Beast onto it. Wouldn't be able to activate yet because of summoning sickness, but gets a nice card draw engine established. And then we've got two extra turn cards in hand. So that's pretty nice with the uh, Parcel Beast ability. Could also try to get the Rejuvenator out of the way and then attack to get a food token, but Trail of Crumbs can also make food. So how much mana are we working with? If I time warp, I can play trail and activate Werebear. That seems good. Start with trail, see if that prompts a response. Does not. Right, let's try and time warp. That works. Activate Parcel Beast. And an Immortal Sun is not bad either. So how do we feel about just playing Immortal Sun and passing with Parcel Beast and then waiting one more turn on Temporal Sundering? And then now we've got two card draw engines essentially. Ephemerate's gonna flicker Rejuvenator. That's fine. And Stomper's now active. Can do the same. Okay, so our opponent's ramping nicely too here. Gotta hope there's no Rivers Rebuke in our future. Deputy? Okay, that can get rid of Immortal Sun. Presumably. That's fine. We can get it back once we bounce Deputy with Temporal Sundering. A land can go in play. And don't think we're using the Werebear's ability here, since we would be sort of wasting the blue mana. Okay, so step one, probably Temporal Sundering, Bouncing Deputy. That works. Maybe it's okay to draft a card from the spellbook using our food token, activate Trail, Take our extra turn, draw from Immortal Sun, can activate Parcel Beast as well. So we're gonna see a lot of cards in the process, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's interesting. We've got a Moon Druid, can find a land, turn 4 commander, and then maybe turn 5, a Great Henge. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any 1 or 2 mana ramp, but I think it might be good enough. Playing against the first sliver. Which is hopefully just a sliver tribal deck. Can bottom land since now we found one with temple. So if we can find a two mana ramp card, that would be great, but... Still on track to maybe cast a Henge on 5 and Rebuke on 6. Herald's Horn on Sliver. Doesn't help in casting their commander, but... Let's go for Moon Druids. We'll find a land. And hopefully... Our opponent's not packing too many sweepers to get past Hexproof. Faber Elder, pretty good with uh, first sliver. Next turn they can play their commander and tap this for 5 mana. So it kind of pays for itself. No way to interact with it now, but we'll play our commander, maybe hit for 2 firsts. Or we can keep it back, that way they cannot attack for 5 for tapping it for mana. Maybe better. Also, I don't really want to trade my commander either. Opponent still needs blue mana to cast the first sliver. And they actually don't have it, so dodge the bullet there. Hollow hats can start looting. And the Lightning Helix kills Moon Druid, which otherwise, I guess, could have also specialized to keep Elder tapped down. A play we could have considered making last turn, but getting the commander out seems nice. So, opponent still potentially unable to cast first Sliver next turn. Missing the blue mana. And yeah, we'll play Henge plus Mindstone. Hope they cannot answer it. And then we can take over with the card advantage it provides. Alrighty, can play a trail instead of Mindstone if we prefer. Although I think the extra mana will still be better overall. We're holding some expensive cards if they answer Henge. Could see Mindstone coming in handy next turn. Alright, Agent's gonna loot. Discarding a masked Vandal, that's surprising. They could have maybe discarded another creature and then used Vandal to blow up our Great Henge. But maybe they were out of creatures, who knows. So just a Cohort, two Slivers basically. And the Gladewalker discarded. Okay, that works for me. Can play a Nessa Hall if we'd like, and then next turn... Bounce their board with Rebuke. And then we can also play a Trail. Could even play a Trail. And then use our Commander's ability to play Nessa Hall. Four, five, six, seven. And then we can even pay for Trail when we sack the food token. Getting full value. And we want Goose or Land. Goose seems nice with Henge. And probably want a Great Shark to maybe counter their commander. So we could make a different play instead of Nessa Hall, keep up a Great Shark, but then the floating mana goes to waste. Now let's just go for Nessa Hall. And I guess we still have a mana for Goose as well. Swords goes after Nessa Hall. So we can discard three cards to save Nessa Hall. Yeah, it might be worth it. So Goose, Troll King, Land. Would have been happy to play the Goose. But our opponent timed their swords 
appropriately so we couldn't see what we draw first before deciding what to discard. But I guess an elves can uh, replace the goose. Not quite as good since goose making a food works with our commander, but... And there's more removal, lightning bolts, okay. Gonna hang back. Nazahal comes back tapped and draws with Henge. Look at that synergy. Opponent hasn't been too lucky with her Herald's Horn yet. And still missing blue mana for first sliver. But they can loot pretty deep here. They maybe didn't want to play their land yet in case they found blue mana, but... It's going to be a spiteful sliver. So, don't want to attack into their creatures now. But we can just bounce all of them. Which should do the trick. And then... Do we have enough mana to keep up a great shark? I guess we're going to be a little short. Although, never mind, I can attack with my werebear. Which will make a food, and then we can use the food to make triple blue in the opponent's turn to cast Great Shark. Could have also cast Giant Opportunity and then bring back Feasting Troll King. But this seems cooler. And yeah, let's go for it. And we can even pay for Trail of Crumbs, because why not? Starix would be nice. And their opponent concedes before even seeing the Great Shark, but they probably know what's up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tiamat, five color dragons, and we've got a promising hand with a couple ramp cards to maybe help make food tokens with Provisioner, which can then help ramp out our own dragon here. And Oracle's not bad either. So depending on whether we draw land next turn, I might explore first, that way we keep into the north to maybe shuffle the top of our deck so Oracle can provide more card advantage. And we found a land, so I feel okay doing that now. And then I think I like Oracle before Werebear. Even though it's more susceptible to removal. It's gonna be a lantern for our opponents. No land on top, sadly, but can still play an extra one. And then extra and provisioner plus into the north is an option. We can also just make treasure tokens to cast dragon without using our commander for food. So, 5 mana. And it's going to be a key to the archive. 1 mana left. And just ends up discarding the Nurture. Okay, land on top. But we might want a Provisioner first. Another land incoming. So we could split the difference, make one treasure, one food, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that should work. And then play our commander. Attack for two. And next turn we have a ton of options. Can cast both of our expensive blue creatures. All their opponent can play Tiamat. And find all the dragons. So we might have to Cyclone Summoner first to kind of reset the board a little bit, bounce their ramp artifacts, get to hit with our Werebear, maybe first generate some extra advantage with Oracle and Provisioner. So it should be a good turn coming up. Although their opponent found some scary dragons as well. They have to discard one to hand size. I'll land on top, start there. And then now, kind of still liking food, as that makes mana with our commander. And can maybe into the north to shuffle. 
find our faceless haven. And make another food, perhaps. So, we can draft a card, make triple blue, finding Great Shark. Finding, I guess Junkwinder also would have been pretty decent. Although I don't think we're casting it here, since I need to cast my Giants. And I guess another Junkwinder. Let's see, Junkwinder could also potentially tap stuff down. Is that to play? Go Junkwinder, Gilded Goose makes a token. Yeah, I guess I don't hate it. Can play another and then still play Gilded Goose. And keep the key tab down as well. And we can make another food. And keep the lantern tab down. Okay. Get in there. More food coming in. All right, so possible we could have sequenced our turn slightly differently, but this seemed to have worked out. Could have actually considered here making one treasure token. That way if I sack both uh, food tokens that are left, I can actually cast Great Shark in the opponent's turn, which would have been a complete blowout. So yeah, lots of neat interactions and some kind of surprising interactions too by drafting cards from the spellbook you otherwise wouldn't really be playing with. So you can have a lot of criticism for alchemy, but some of these cards are actually pretty fun to play with and uh, give you a lot of replayability. So yeah, overall quite happy with how this blue-green where bear deck turned out. We didn't get to see too many of the bear synergies in action, but the game plan of food tokens ramping into big blue creatures seemed to work pretty well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.